Welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a while if you didn't see my last video that I uploaded right before this. Um, it's probably been about three or four years since the last time I was on here. Um, so, and if you did see the last video, uh, welcome back again. You, you get two greetings in this one. Um, so, yeah, what we're going to be doing today is kind of a bit of a tutorial um, about a specific step in the development process, um, doing your own film at home. Um, it's a pretty crucial part of it, and everybody talks about it, but nobody actually shows it, uh, because film is light sensitive. If you don't do it in a completely dark space, whether it be a changing bag or a dark room, um, then yeah, it, it just ruins the film. You can't just like do it like this um, or in a, you know, where you can actually see what you're doing and figure it out how the process actually works rather than just fumbling through blindly like I did. Um, there are a ton of resources out there um, that will get you started, that got me started um, in the home development realm. Um, and it's honestly, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. If you can make, uh, if you can follow directions to make a pack of Jello, you can develop your own film. It's really easy. Um, it does obviously take some practice and there's a bit of a learning curve, but I think anybody who wants to do it or has ever thought about doing can and should. It saves you a ton of money uh, developing your own film at home. So, um, and I am getting used to making videos again. I keep like looking at the little flip out screen on the side and not actually at the lens. So I apologize if I am a little bit um, out of practice, but you know, here we go. Um, so, like I was saying, you want to get your roll of film, exposed film, onto a reel that you then put into your development tank, and then that's where you start the process with all the chemicals and everything um, that go into it. Um, so, I have a roll of film that is completely ruined. <laughs> um, I was on a trip in Colorado and I took a bunch of film with me and I did not have the most elegant storage solution. Um, so through all the hiking and the jostling and the airplanes and camping and whatever, um, this little top part got um, somehow off and that just completely ruined the film. So, at first I was kind of bummed, I was like, oh man, that's just film wasted. But, um, I mean, I rolled it myself, so I wasn't that bummed about it, um, just because I knew I had a ton more. I didn't spend, like, a crazy amount. This isn't, like, Tri-X or anything. Um, so, yeah, I was kind of bummed at first, but then started thinking about it, I was like, you know, I could actually use this uh, for something um, and actually show you guys what it's like or what you need to do to load your film rather than either wasting your own film or uh, as an experiment or um, fumbling around in the dark like I did. So yeah, we're gonna get this onto here. All right, so when you are loading your film onto your reel, you are going to need uh, three things. One, an exposed roll of film. You are also going to need your reel. And you need some scissors. Um, stop it. And yes, there we go. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, obviously you need your development tank and the chemicals and all that, but just for this step, um, this is what you need. Um, there are two main types of film cassette, um, as far as 35 millimeter goes. Um, you've got the reusable, reloadable cassette that I do 98% of my work on. 
Um, it's pretty simple. Um, you got, it's just like a little, little thing that you twist off and that lets you pull the film out. Before we get to that, we do also, uh, there is also, um, the, your standard, you know, manufactured, uh, roll of film. And this is a bit more complicated to get access to the film inside. Um, there are some tools that can help you, uh, access the film that's in here. Cause obviously you can't just like pull or twist this off. Um, some tools will go into right here, this little slot where the, um, film comes out like that. Um, I've never used one of those. I honestly just use a, um, bottle opener, um, and just kind of work around and pry this part off. Um, and then, you know, you, then it's literally just the same as that. Um, yeah, there, there is a specific tool though that you can use that makes it really easy to get this open. I just haven't felt like investing in one because I, like I said, I shoot most of my stuff on, um, reusable film cassettes. So, first thing that you're gonna wanna do, and I just wanna reiterate, you're more than welcome to try this in the light. Um, if you have a roll to spare or just to get rid of, you wanna make that sacrifice, that's fine. Um, or um, you can just fumble around in the dark. Um, but yes, so let's actually stop blabbering and get to it. Um, so first things first, you're gonna take this part off and then pull the film out. You're gonna wanna try and not touch the middle part where the actual exposure is. Uh, it can be a little unavoidable sometimes, but yeah. Um, you're gonna wanna cut the film leader off just to make a nice flat edge right there. And on this type of reel, there are other types of reel, um, but this is what I use and this is, it seems to be pretty common, uh, is this plastic reel with a helpful little loading ramp. Um, you're gonna slide this flat part in through these little notched areas. And um, there are a couple ball bearings here that you're gonna slide it over. And that kind of keeps the film in place. And then uh, you'll, see, you'll see what I do after that. So, come back, thank you, all right. So, you get it kind of like this. And uh, yeah, there you go, just slide it in over the ball bearings and it's nice and nice and tight nice and uh, yeah nice and tight <laughs> um, let's see so next thing you're gonna do is uh, this works by like a ratcheting mechanism you slide it up and then the ball bearings keep it in place and that's how you do it so yeah, just keep going back and forth until you reach the end of the film, and you'll know um, when you reach the end of the film just because it stops going. Um, sometimes it will catch a little bit if there's a little bit of moisture in there. Um, all you have to do is just kind of, you don't want to put your thumb on the middle of it like that, um, but you can just kind of, if it does get stuck in a you just uh, kind of just put a little bit of pressure on the outside of the film and that should be enough to keep it going. Again, this does take practice, um, but I thought it would be helpful to just show you guys what it actually looks like. Um, and there we go. There's a little bit of the tape. Um, and obviously, you know, in a changing bag or a dark room, you can't really see where the tape is, but you'll feel it. Um, 
whenever it stops taking up. So next thing is you just cut it off, um, get it another couple of uh, couple twists, and you're ready to put this in your development tank. Yeah, that's that's honestly all there is to it. It's really easy. Um, if you do want to know more about the whole process of developing film yourself, um, my recommendations would be check out Matt Day's uh, channel. Matt Day, he did, uh, I think he was probably the, it was between him and uh, Ted Forbes um, from The Art of Photography. They both, I, I read some articles and watched their videos and that is what got me started and I learned from there. Um, learned from my mistakes, I guess I should say. Um, but yeah, that's super, super good uh, resources to check out. Um, yeah, this is uh, just one part of it that a lot of people are understandably hesitant to actually show because you can't really, <laughs> I mean, if you, you could, I guess, put a camera on while you're, maybe you could use like an infrared camera maybe, I don't know. Um, if you're doing it in pitch black or, you know, you just waste a roll of film and nobody wants to do that. Um, so yeah, if you liked this kind of thing, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to do more videos like this. Um, I, or if you want to see my whole process from start to be, start to beginning, <laughs> from start to end, start to finish. Um, I can do that. Like I said, there's a bunch of people that have already done that. I just wanted to show this step in particular. Um, yeah, this is uh, kind of the part of the video where I'm just like, all right, what do you guys want to see? What um, I'm out of the game for a while and I could keep doing what I did do with, which is just like reviewing old random cameras and talking about them, or I could do, uh, a lot of people really enjoyed the Plastic Adventures series that I was doing a while back. I still have uh, several plastic, all plastic cameras that I didn't get to. Um, so I could revisit that. I could talk about just photography fundamentals. If you want to know about aperture and shutter speed and ISO and how those interact and um, how to use the rule of thirds and what to do with contrasts and what you're looking for and you know all the photographic style, photographic composition. Again, all of this stuff is out there, but if you want to hear my weird perspective on everything, let me know. Um, I'm looking for ideas of how to move this channel forward and um, yeah, also one more thing. Let me know what you think about the name camaraderie. I was personally never sold on it, even though I came up with it. It was just a the, one of the first things that kind of came to mind, and it was a you know it's it's a pun, and it it got the point across. So if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it and have a suggestion for something else, let me know. Even if you do like it and also have a suggestion, let me know that too. Uh, just let me know, man. So yeah, that's uh, going to be it for today, and yeah, see you next time. Hopefully it shouldn't be another three and a half or four years, <laughs> so here's hoping. Um, yeah, 